Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now I'm hoping this is going to be a reasonably short video because I've got to get off down to Taupo today. Um, this is the second job on a boat trailer that I'm currently working on and the previous video that I've done was to cover the um, fully strip, full strip down and rebuild uh, of the brake calipers. Now, to give you some background history on this, somebody had worked on this trailer very recently. Uh, the owner of the trailer uh, took it down the road, basically on the way to Taupo, he was going on holiday. And after about 10 k's, he thought, hmm, I better just check, make sure that everything's okay. And one of the wheels was red hot. The brake was binding on, um, very, very hot. It spat all the grease out all over the wheel and um, basically had to take the trailer home, park it up and couldn't take his boat down to Taupo. And he asked me to have a look at it. Now, I've had to diagnose as to why that wheel got hot. Did the chap that worked on it put excessive preload on the taper roller bearings and the hub? Was that the cause of the heat? Or was it down to the brake binding on? Well, it turns out it was down to the brake binding on. So the brake was the primary fail. And on that video, we found that uh, the piston was seized and one of the sliders was badly seized too. Oh, and the caliper body was slightly bent. So three problems. Um, but because the hub got so hot, because um, on these things the, the brake disc is an integral part of the hub, it's cast iron so it transfers heat really well, um, we're going to change the wheel bearing as a matter of course because that wheel bearing we know has suffered extreme heat and lack of lubrication because the lubrication, essentially the grease, was got solidified, sorry, it went, it went to a liquid and it was, you know, sprayed out all over the wheel. So, um, even if the bearing feels fine, we're going to change it because, um, you know, it's made of hardened steel, uh, the rollers in the bearings, and if they, if they overheat, they lose their hardness, essentially, their properties, and that bearing could easily fail in the near future. So, I went out and I called in at TWL in Albany, my friends down there, and they sorted me out with a wheel bearing kit. And this one is a TWK02. And inside this kit, uh, we get everything we need to basically recondition the hub. Now, if the brake disc had been badly scored, then we'd have to replace the whole hub assembly because the brake, as I said earlier on, is part of the hub. It's a bit crappy, to be honest. Um, but hey, such is life. So you get lots of boxes and paperwork and stuff, you don't need any of that, get rid of that. Um, the bearings themselves, just so you know what's inside, there's two different sizes, they're both taper roller bearings. The inner, the large bearing is that one there, look, okay, and they're available anywhere. Um, the part number is LM6078, sorry, LM67048, okay, that's the large bearing. And the small bearing is an LM11949. There you go, look, there's the part number for that one. And also in the kit, you get the rear seal. Now, these are a bit different to the ones in the UK. These seals don't rotate. They don't rotate with the hub. These are static seals that sit on the, end of the, uh, on the inside of the stub axle on the shoulder. Uh, we also get a seal saver, which goes basically at the back of the hub. And essentially, I keep saying that word, don't I? That seal, which is stationary, runs on that seal saver there, look. Okay, it sits in there like that. And this rotates with the hub, and this is stationary. And we also get a washer. Now, many people don't know where this goes. Now, I can't show you on the vehicle, because the vehicle's back in the city. Well, in Albany. And I'm in the workshop. So when you fit this seal onto the stub axle, this washer goes on first and it sits behind the seal to support the seal. And that washer sits against oh, sits against a shoulder on the stub axle. So you put the put the washer on first, slide that down the stub axle, then you get the seal, and you slide that down the stub axle, and then you cover this lot in grease. So I can't show you that bit because I haven't got the trailer here. But hey, on another video, I will. So on this video, this I'm going to show you how to extract the old bearings from the hub and fit new ones. Here we go. Right, so the first job is we can remove the inner race of the outer bearing 
just by doing that. I'll stick that over there. Turn the hub over. Try and keep the grease off the brake disc as best you can. This is a really messy job, so I have plenty of rags to hand. Now, we've also got, just sat around there, is the seal saver. Now, if we pop out that inner race of the rear bearing, the inner bearing, then that um, that seal saver is going to come out at the same time. So what we're going to do is mount it in the vise, and then probably can't see too well, but where the inner race, or sorry, where the outer race of the inner bearing is mounted, there's a shoulder inside the casting, and I'll try and show you that on camera. But there's a couple of notches where it's notched out, so you can get your punch against that outer race and punch it backwards. Okay, so with the hub mounted in the vise. And I'm very fortunate, I've got aluminium jaws on my, one of my vices, so um, don't need to worry about that too much. If you look inside, not easy, but there's a little notch just there in that shoulder that I've cleaned off. So you can get your punch. I don't mean the kind you get down at the pub. Get your punch. Oop, not easy with a camera. And you get your punch and put it in there. And if you get that, if you give it a hit with a hammer, it's going to push the outer race and the inner race and the seal carrier all backwards. Now, there's two of these notches. There's one further up as well, which I can get my little pointy stick. I think it's somewhere behind all that grease up there somewhere. Okay, so you'll find it. Give it a clear look. If you give it a clean off, you'll find the little notch. Some have big notches, some have little notches, but that's what you need to do. Clean out that, locate them, and mount your punch on those and give them a tap out. And that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, now the camera's probably going to shake around a bit. But that really can't be helped. So, sorry chaps. really really important that you get your punch in the right place don't want to go damaging the casting Okay, so that's the seal saver out and the inner race out and you can see now the outer race is just starting to come out. Get a rag, get that bit of clean, get rid of some of the grease, lovely grease, Ooh, grease on the brake. Once you're off the shoulder, you can pretty much go on to any part of that race. There we go. Super job. Sorry about the uh, wobbly camera. Okay, I've swapped to the, uh, the little vice, just hopefully it will cut down a bit on the vibration because this is a much stronger bench. And you can see what's going on now. The, the outer race of the small bearing comes out in exactly the same way. There we go. Job done. 
Now, the next job, before you go any further, is to have a really good check inside the hub of any problems. Now, if you found that when you were taking those outer races out, they were really loose in the hub, then you need a new hub. Those outer races should be a tight fit, and there should be no possibility of them moving on their own. Otherwise, the bearing itself may not do its job. It could all become one unit. If it starts to bind a little bit, and the outer race is going to spin, and it's going to cause a real problem. Okay, you can see a bit more clearly now. There's actually four notches. I only saw two, but there's actually four notches in the casting here, look. Now, that's where you put your punch when you're taking the bearing out. And there's lots of different style hubs out there. Some have much bigger gaps than that. But uh, just make sure that that shoulder down there is clear of any debris. Otherwise, the new bearing's not going to sit properly. And you're also looking for cracks, heat distortion, you know, anything, any telltale signs that this hub has got a problem because now it's time to replace it if need be. Okay, right, so that side is done. And it all looks, for what's obviously an old hub, it doesn't look too bad. Okay, we'll flip that round now. This is a, this is a, uh, a Trojan hub. So hopefully the bearing set should work. Right, we'll flick that round, there we go. And again, we're going to inspect where the front or the outer bearing sits. That's the small one. There we go. And this one really only has, well, it's hard to go any actually. It's got a little tiny notch there, a little crappy notch there. These are pretty much non-existent. Quite a, an old style, not really that well made to be honest, made to a price, there you go. Okay, so the next job now is to install the new outer races. So if we get the, get the small bearing, and just open that up, there we go, get the bearing out. Now, all we want at the moment is the outer race. We're not interested in the inner race, so we'll put that somewhere nice and clean, which is the box, and we'll stick that on there. We've got to basically pack that with grease a bit later on, but we can fit this now. Now, obviously, there's two possible ways you could fit this bearing. You could fit it that way. That would be really bad. Or you could fit it the correct way, which is with the taper, the larger diameter of the taper facing outwards, because don't forget, that taper roller bearing is going to sit in there like that. And if you fit it the wrong way around, of course, it's not going to fit. And you'll also find there's hardly any lip to get it back out again. So you're pretty much stuffed up. Okay, so a taper, larger diameter of the taper facing outwards. Drop that onto there. And then, using our special hammer, I'm just going to tap that into place. Obviously, we can't get all the way down, so we're now going to need to use something to get it further down that uh, that recess, all the way down until it hits that shoulder. And you can see the shoulder is probably about another seven or eight mil further down. Now, what I like to use is a socket, and I have lots of different size sockets. So I'll try and find one that's just nope, too small. But it's just big enough to sit. Oh, there we go. Look on that lip but still a little bit smaller diameter because I don't want to get stuck actually in the in the casting. Okay, here we go. You can use you can use a punch, you know, work your way around if you haven't got a socket, that's not a problem. But it's it's a little bit more damaging to the to the bearing, you know. It's, When you hear that sort of ringing noise, that tells you that the bearing is home. That's against the shoulder. So that one's already in now. That's done. Okay, we're going to flick it over. And we're going to fit the outer race of the inner bearing. 
Now that's the larger one, so we'll just grab hold of that. Exactly the same procedure. We're not really too fussed about the inner race at the moment, so we'll stick that on the box somewhere nice and clean. And again, it's the same as the other one. It's the larger diameter of the taper facing towards you. Really important. Otherwise, you're going to have some major problems later on. Now, the hardest part of fitting these is getting it started. You'll find the little sort of rock, and you've got to find the pivot point. There we go, so she's started now. Now this is obviously a lot bigger than the other one, so we're going to need a really big socket to fit on there, and I don't think I've even got one that big. Not, not to hand, so we'll just use a punch for that. Okay. Now, if you've got a brass punch, a lot softer than one of these, then that's a really good thing to use. I don't have one of those. And that helps to reduce the, the risk of, of damaging the race, you know, marking the bearing. Now, as you can see, we've still got a fair way to go, about another 10, maybe 12 millimeters down there. So, this is where you've got to be a bit careful. Because you're only really, you're right on the edge of that race. Now you can get bearing installer kits, and they are really useful. But I try to show people a way of doing this just using basic tools. Most people don't have those. Once you've got past this lip, then it's much, much easier. See, I can start to rest the punch now against the lip, pushing slightly outwards, and that holds the punch in position. And you're trying to get it to go down parallel, you know? If you go off at an angle, if you just hammer too much on one side, it's going to twist and it's going to jam. And sometimes you've got to take them out have another go but it is just practice you get better at it Cool. And take your time doing it. Don't don't rush. Don't try and go too far too quick. You know, it's all about taking your time and trying to keep it as parallel as you can and causing as least damage as possible. Right. What's next? Well, we need to pack some bearings, pack the inner bearings of grease, and then we can drop them in. So we'll do the rear one first. Okay. So you've got to pack the bearing of grease. And this is a really messy job. That's why you've got to wear gloves. There we go, look. Great stuff. Now once you've gone all the way around, just, just hold the inner race, the inner, inner race, and just rotate the cage with the rollers whilst pumping grease through with your fingers. You know, you're just sort of working it in, trying to cover everything. You see they're coming around pretty clean still. Just keep working it in, there we go. Excellent. Now, we also need a bit of grease on that um, inner race, and we also need to put about, you know, a reasonable chunk of grease in between those two races, that, like a reservoir of grease, actually, that stays in the hub. But don't fill it full. If you put too much in there, when it warms up, it's going to expand, and it's going to push through the bearings, push through the seals, and you're going to get grease all over the place.
So about a third to maybe half maximum with grease in that cavity. There we go. Look. Now, normally I'd use a paintbrush at my grease tub, but looking a bit contaminated nowadays. So straight out of the grease gun. There we go. And you can just run that around. Push it back in there, look. There we go. Bit of grease on that inner race. Sorry, outer race. There we go. Ready for its bearing. It's one of the next ones to go on. Cool. Bit of grease on there. Excellent job. Right. So I'll pop that race into there and you can just make sure it's nice and smooth, which it is. Perfect. Right, and then what we do is just make sure that that bearing has got plenty of grease around the back there. Look, like that. Can't stress how messy this is. It's a very messy job. Almost as messy as CV joints. Now, remember that seal saver? Well, that's basically what this seal runs on, and it needs that there because the casting on these hubs is really rough, and this seal won't seal against it. It needs this to be fitted. That goes in there like that. And getting these in is even harder than fitting the bearings. They're a bit of a pain because they tend to rock around a lot. Ooh, almost. Well, that's the biggest socket of 46 mil that I've got to hand, so we're going to use that. You can see how, it, how it's rocking around, it just doesn't want to sit and get started. A slightly bigger socket would be great. There we go. And then just work your way around the edge. Just like you did with the bearing race, really. And when you hear that high ringing noise, you know it's all the way in. Okay. Cool. Right, and so flick it back over again now. And the last thing to do is to pack the small bearing with grease. We can drop it in there, and then it's ready to go on the uh, on the stub axle. Okay, same again. So we just want to fill all the gaps. Make sure there's grease everywhere. There we go and just work it into that bearing best you can. Super job. Okay, that goes in there. Okay, so there you go. That's how you fit a, a new bearings to a trailer um, hub assembly, basically. And it wasn't too bad. You know, you've just got to keep your eye out for problems. But um, this hub basically turned out to be okay. No problems at all. And there's the back lock. Okay. Now, obviously, when you refit this to the vehicle and you fit that seal on the stub axle, put some grease on that seal saver. That's that stainless steel little ring there, look and also put some grease actually on the seal itself. Um, otherwise it's going to run dry and it's going to wear really quickly and it's not going to keep all the water out when you dip it in the sea, basically. Okay, well I hope you found that video helpful. If you'd uh, like to subscribe to the channel, if you, if you want to see some more videos of how to fix stuff, then click on subscribe. You will see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon and then tick the box to turn on notifications. 
And that way, our friends at YouTube will send you an email whenever I upload any new videos, which is fantastic. Cheers, YouTube. Um, also, you'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. But if you wouldn't mind, please use YouTube as the first port of call for communication. Because any questions that you ask me may be questions that other people might ask me as well. And they hopefully will see the answer that I've given you. And they'll get the answer they need straight away. And they can fix their car almost immediately. Okay, that's about it. Cheers for watching, guys. Over and out.